Go ahead, Sarah, over to you. Great, thank you. Just let everybody in here. Well, welcome to everybody today. Uh, you are at the elect electric trash truck uh, webinar, which hopefully you're in the right place. Uh, this is the Clean Cities Northern Tier team, and we are um, a group of Clean Cities coalitions from Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, and we're happy to welcome you all here today. We have a great lineup of speakers today talking about uh, zero emission refuse haulers, and we have lots of information and vendors here, so we're excited to get started. Uh, just to move on to a few webinar logistics, uh, please make sure your audio is muted and your video is off. And if you'd like to um, have questions or comments, please type them into the chat and we'll collect them. And um, after each uh, presenter, we can have a few minutes of, of question discussion. Uh, the webinar is being recorded and will be shared out after um, after the webinar, so we'll, it, you can always look it back if you need to. So we are, like I said, the, the Northern Tier uh, Clean Cities Coalition, we call ourselves here in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Um, I am Sarah Mills Knapp. I'm the Director of Sustainability for the Greater Portland Council of Government here in Maine, which hosts our Maine Clean Communities. And we have Jessica Wilcox from New Hampshire and Peggy O'Neill from um, Vermont here with us. So we're very excited to have um, everybody here today. Can move to the next slide. So the Clean Cities Coalitions were a part of 75 active coalitions across the entire country. Um, we have a great group um, throughout the country and we share lots of information about alternative fuels and transportation. Um, we are supported by the uh, Department of Energy across the country and um, we have active coalitions and in, in lots of places and multiple ones um, here in the Northeast. We can go to the next slide. So our Clean Cities coalitions here in Vermont and Maine and New Hampshire, we work specifically to help support uh, fleets and stakeholders with alternative fuels, understanding technologies for vehicles and equipment, um, understanding how to improve fuel efficiency and reduce emissions. Uh, we connect fleets with fuel providers. We provide a lot of partnership opportunities. We do a lot of data collection and tracking projects um, and providing lots of education and outreach, which is part of our series today. This is part of a, a long series we've been doing over the past couple of years on medium and heavy duty electrification. So we're excited to bring all these resources to the three states we work in. So we have our first poll here today. We'd like to just get everybody's um, answer to this poll here. Are you considering electrifying your refuse fleet? So please, I think the poll will pop up. Oh, there we go. No, actually, so oh, we, this was part of the questions oh, that we asked so, during the registration. So. More of the registration, <laughs> great. So lots of you are, which is exciting. So there's 88% of you that are considering electrifying, and hopefully today this will help you with some of that information. We have a great lineup of speakers. We have the City of uh, New York Department of Sanitation. We have vendors uh, from BYD, Fermata Energy, and from Excel Fleet and Curb Tender. So we're excited to bring you this information today. And clearly there's a lot of you that are looking to electrify your refuse fleets. So we can jump into our first presenter, uh, Spira Katan from the New York City Sanitation Department. It's the Deputy Director. And you can take it away, Spiro. Okay, good morning, everyone. And, and thank you for having us. And uh, my name is Spiro Katan. I'm a deputy director with the New York City Department of Sanitation, responsible for our uh, clean alternative alternative fuels uh, program at, here at DSNY. And I'm joined um, here by uh, Deputy Deputy uh, Commissioner Stephen Hart, uh, who's responsible for support services. Uh, five viewers within the Department of Sanitation, and and he's joining me today. And we're going to co-chair this uh, presentation. So, Commissioner, Great. thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Hart. Uh, recently joined the uh, Department of Sanitation with 20 years of service uh, in the city, and I'm excited about uh, this opportunity here to speak. And uh, Spiro uh, runs our clean fuel program, and he is uh, well known here within our area, and has participated in many of these types of events. Uh, so uh, very excited to kick this off and uh, 
talk a little bit about sanitation. So uh, if our, sli our slides are up, uh, we can go to the, the next slide. We, uh, a little bit about sanitation. Uh, again, we're the largest uh, sanitation department in the world and, and uh, collect about 10,000, 10, uh, 10 million, 10 tons of garbage, uh, translating to about 24 million pounds of trash and recycling every day here in the city. Uh, these are amazing statistics. And uh, so again, uh, our crews are, are out uh, working very hard and diligently to remove solid waste, litter. And, and again, our uh, snow operation is, is one that we pay a lot of attention to, and it's actually a year round operation. So uh, once uh, snow season stops, again, we we get right into the snow prep and, and we're out and preparing for the next season. Uh, we are also a leader in environmentalism and uh, have uh, an, a commitment to uh, sending zero waste to landfills. We've shut down uh, many landfills in the city and I don't believe we have any that are active no. right now. So um, a little bit about us uh, again. Our main operation, uh, we spend a lot of time, as I mentioned, on snow operation and snow removal. Well, you're, you'll hear a little bit of a theme uh, throughout the presentation uh, and, and many of the, the areas that, uh, that we've been talking about, we will be talking about uh, as it comes to electrifying our fleet uh, center around that. That is our mainstream operation. And um, I think one of the areas that we'll talk about is, you know, what is mission critical uh, electrification? I think for us, uh, electrifying our fleet, we've taken a new approach to it. Uh, we've got different local laws and executive orders, which you'll hear about. But but really, what what it means to us is, you know, how do we prioritize uh, based upon what's available in the marketplace, and how do we align the, you know those solutions to our fleet, our operation, and and. Uh, take a realistic approach to electrifying the fleet. And you'll see, um, you know, again, if our facilities and our space and, you know, and our power grid, you know, is not available, then, you know, we have other challenges. Sometimes it's not about uh, what's available in, in the vehicle market fleet area, but it's about other types of, of issues that we've learned uh, over the years. Uh, so again, from snow removal, street cleaning, recycling, Freon, you know, we have so many different use cases for um, for our fleet operation. If you could go to the next slide, and uh, you know, one of you know our fleet, we we believe is you know again largest, uh, a very large fleet in comparison to many other uh, areas throughout the country and the world. Again, 5,900 uh, vehicles large. And you'll see a little bit of a breakdown uh, in, you know, from collection trucks, uh, you know, at the top to our salt uh, spreader fleet, uh, sweepers, uh, um, you know, all the way down to uh, passenger cars. You know, we're starting to take an approach where, you know, our class one, class two, class three vehicles, uh, we have different strategies for each. And so you'll see throughout the presentation that, um, you know, a lot of our focus is really, you know, starting with the lighter duty fleets and working our way in a pyramid, you know, fashion to the heavy duty fleets where it's become a little bit more challenging to uh, get the types of duty cycles that we require uh, in order to meet our plowing operation. So I'm going to turn it over to Spiro, uh, has years of experience in this field. Now, very excited. We, we've been working on this presentation for a little bit, and, and I think you'll learn a lot. So thank you for having us. Thank you, Commissioner. So there are a number of environmental fleet initiatives that we have to comply with. Uh, back in 2005, Local Law 38 required everything below 14,000 pounds, GVW, to be best in class, with with respect to tailpipe emissions. On 2015, one NYC required an 80% reduction in, in fleet greenhouse gases by 2035. That's over the 2005 baseline. And then most recent, executive order number uh, 53 requires an all electric municipal fleet by the year 2040. A very tall order, very ambitious environmental goals for the 
in New York City uh, for the New York City fleet. Next slide, please. As a result of local law 38 and executive order number 53, we're seeing a large influx of electric and plug-in vehicles in our fleet. Today, we have two, just under 300 vehicles. That makes up 33% of our light duty fleet. And most of the vehicles can utilize a level two charger to charge uh, the EV, uh, but not all of them can utilize a DC, uh, DC fast charge, charger at this time. Going forward, everything we buy will have the capability to charge VA level two and a DC fast charger. Next slide, please. There's a, a, a big difference in the power consumption of a level two versus a DC fast charger and a big difference in the power output of a level two and a DC fast charger. Today, we have 161 ports available for our fleet, as uh, level two ports, and uh, 13 DC uh, ports available um, from the DC fast chargers. And, and that number, uh, we're working um, ambitiously and, and diligently to uh, grow our EVSE inventory every single day. Next slide, please. So the DC fast charger that we utilize uh, uh, has a uh, CCS1 and a Chatamo uh, charge port. Our level two chargers use an SAE J1772 uh, type cable. Next, please. All our chargers that net network together said um, utilizing the charge point network. So that means we have um, um, a dashboard which we can go to and, and, and look at the performance of the vehicles and the EV charges. It's basically one one stop uh, shopping, which also helps us obtain all the metrics we're interested in, how much charge time, how many kilowatt hours, etc. Next, please. And for the first time this calendar year, we, we, we will be introducing our first solar carports. We have 18 planned for calendar year 2022 at various locations throughout the five boroughs of New York City. So we're excited to launch our for, first solar carports this year. Next, please. To meet the requirements of the GHG requirements of 1NYC under the New York City Clean Fleet Plan, the Department of Sanitation tested and adopted many different technologies to try to reduce our overall uh, uh, citywide greenhouse gases. Next slide, please. And we are seeing a downward trend with respect to diesel usage and unleaded usage. So we, we are just doing a pretty good job reducing our greenhouse gas emissions, and we will continue uh, on that path going forward. Next, please. Timing could not have been better when Executive Order 53 was signed in 2020. DSNY was presented with an opportunity to test the first battery electric refuse truck and the first battery electric street sweeper. The, the, the refuse truck launched in November 18th of 2020. The electric street sweeper launched in May 7th of 2021. So uh, timing was impeccable. Next slide, please. Uh, at a glance, both units are, are the same make and model as the diesel counterparts, which is a good thing for us, right? And if you look at the, the, the fuel tanks of, of the refuse truck, it utilizes 266 kilowatt, hour, kilowatt hours of fuel battery and the street sweeper utilized 180 kilowatt hours of, of battery. So uh, that's that was a starting point for us. And uh, as, as you see further in the slides that the this battery size has worked well, uh, preliminary test results show that there was size uh, pretty good uh, from the get go. Next, please. So we did install our first DC fast charger uh, to accommodate our first battery electric refuse truck. The, bat the fast charger was installed in advance of uh, the BEV uh, refuse truck and, and it was installed in August of 2020. The truck was launched in November. And today we have 13 DC fast chargers operational citywide and additional units are planned in calendar year 2022. So we're hoping to grow our portfolio, not just of level two chargers as well as DC fast chargers. Next slide, please. So before we handed the electric refuse truck to the union operators, 
we conducted some preliminary shakedown testing, which included 25,000 pounds of payload in the form of steel, a uh, house to house uh, simulation day in, day out, about two weeks worth of testing, great ability, and we ran it out of fuel just to see how low it can go. And so we were pleasantly surprised and felt comfortable that the truck was ready for prime time. Next slide, please. We did con conduct first responder training with uh, FDNY. We trained our mechanics on safety and, on, and as well as the operators, on, uh, as well as the union operators on the truck before we moved forward with the program. Please. That's just a, um, a, a, a shot of, of the different routes the battery electric refuse truck served uh, from day to day. I think the average miles traveled was maybe just under 10 miles a day, basically. So just to give a quick glimpse of what, uh, what was the battery? Yeah, uh, the batteries pleasantly used. surprised. We used just 40% of the entire fuel tank, 40% of the battery. Again, about eight passing. hours. Absolutely. Next slide, please. And the metrics are right there. So um, 11 months of operation, including winter. Uh, the truck performed pretty well. It was a mild winter last year, but the truck went out every single day. Uh, did not plow snow. This, this pre-production unit was not equipped with a snow plow hitch. Um, but it did go out and perform. Um, uh, I mentioned a moment ago, just we used 40% of the, bat the, the, the battery capacity, which is wonderful. It gave us plenty of, of, of reserve fuel on the truck. Um, about average payload about just under 10 tons. And, that tr and there, there were days when we carried the, in the, the full capacity of two, uh, 12 and a half tons of payload. So it performed well. Uh, average miles, 10 miles a day, and and the average char charge time was basically basically just uh, uh, over an hour and a half, which is and these trucks were uh, charged during uh, the overnight hours. Next, please. So, 49% of that battery capacity uh, went to the drivetrain as expected. 29% went to the body hydraulics. The, the body on this, this unit was did utilize uh, hydraulics to operate, and 22% went towards the parasitic loads of the rest of uh, the cat chassis. Next, please. Our street sweeper, overall, uh, overall the sweeper used an average of 70 kilowatts per day, which is just under the total total battery capacity. It was well under uh, the 50% uh, of the battery capacity, which means it was sized, the battery package was sized right for the application. Next, please. Next steps, uh, DSNY plans to test one of each in every zone of operation. Um, uh, you know, we, we operate in the fibers of New York City, but in, in our world, we are five to 10 years from now, as we get into 2030, I think we're gonna find a different landscape of what's available. And, you know, the fleet today uh, may not look like the fleet tomorrow. And I think we'll have other options. So we're gonna go after the low hanging fruit uh, and, you know, but the real uh, meat and potatoes of our operation is, is plowing. And uh, until we could upgrade our facilities, make sure they have full backup generators, and they can function throughout ice storms and other uh, blizzards, then it's gonna be challenging. Uh, when, when we go into snow operation, our vehicles are, you know, they plow uh, for 12 hours, they come back, they need to be charged uh, for an hour or take breaks for an hour and they're back on the, on the road. So having, you know, and, you know, having streets available where we can line up for half a mile, uh, you know, we have a half a mile of, of, of you know, uh, plowing vehicles that are just, you know, lined up, you know, waiting to go or, or, or they come back and they're taking breaks and then they're back on the street. I mean, once you put the, you know, the plows on, uh, you know, a lot of our facilities don't have the space uh, or area that we can charge. So this one size fits all approach is something that we've been talking about internally. And we think that um, there's going to be different strategies on how to address many of these limitations. And so um, I think we have to talk a little bit about, you know, throughout this, encourage the conversation around what's feasible uh, now as well as in the future. So 
Um, you know, I'll turn it back to you, Spiro, to, to close up the presentation. Yeah, uh, so um, we can go to the next slide. So DSMR has received multiple awards for our clean fuel initiative, something we're very proud of. Next slide, please. And we want to mention this is not just DSNY, this is a citywide initiative. Every city agency, work, uh, the city of New York, is doing their part to try uh, to comply with our local initiatives. And, and, I, and I think we're all off to a great start and doing the best that we can. And I think the next and, slide. You know, we want to thank everyone uh, here. We also want to thank our, our agency partners, such as DCAS, uh, Fire, NYPD, and others that we work day in and day out uh, throughout this, um, you know, this, well, I guess, day-to-day -day operations and emergency response. And uh, and appreciate you inviting us. Uh, I also want to say that I would be remiss if I didn't state that we're rolling out a major Queens uh, organics program starting October 3rd in the borough of Queens. Very exciting. And we're going to have trucks picking up food spray, scraps, yard waste, uh, food soil, paper products once a week in our largest, most diverse borough. So I'm very excited uh, about the use cases. We're gonna apply uh, many uh, electric, uh, again, uh, testing, uh, you know, again, against different use cases, and we'll continue to, you know, document, participate, and uh, you know, share our lessons learned and the positives and negatives, and so we can create that roadmap map for the future. Thank you again. Thank Jessica, you. we'll be happy to answer questions when we get to that uh, point. Excellent. So you guys will be able to stay on then. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. All right. Go ahead and mute and turn off your camera. Thank you so much again for that presentation. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and introduce our next presenter. So up next, we are going to have Jeff Enerine with BYD Motors. He's our regional sales manager here in the Northeast. And just going to share with us about BYD's Class 6 and Class 8 refuse trucks. So go ahead and uh, share your screen, Jeff, and we look forward to your presentation here. Okay. Yep. Let me pull it up here. Great. Take, take your time. All right, I'm sharing it. Is it co coming through or? So I can see your file, your file screen, but I don't see the presentation itself. Yeah, just pulled it up here. Let me see. Let's see here. Let's see, it's got to go. If you'd like, I can share your slides. I've got copies here on my end. Yeah, it should be able to pull here. Here we go. This should work. Yep, now we see him. If you just want to make it from the beginning, you're good to go. Yep, there we go. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, it's still up there? Yep, looks good. Okay. All right, so, um, you know, welcome everybody and, uh, you know, thank you to the to the Northern Tiers Coalition for allowing us to participate in this. Um, my name is Jeff M. Ryan. I I'm the sales manager for BYD in the Northeast and um, I work out of Rochester, New York. Um, I do have a truck background. I, I sold diesel trucks, you know, for the last eight years. Um, so I do know trucks, you know, but I, you know, the electric side is new to me, but um, it's all very exciting and interesting and I'm happy to be a part of it. And also joining on the call is Michael Stafford. He's our director of business development. Um, him and I kind of work on a lot of things together. So, um, you know, he's, he's listening to, I'm not sure if he can unmute his mic to say anything, but he is on the call as well. Um, so he'll help, he'll, he'll help answer any questions as we move along if there's something that, uh, you know, he, he may have more info than I do. All right, so I'm gonna go to the next slide here. So just a little background on BYD. So BYD started as a battery manufacturer, um, you know, more than 30 years ago. So, 
you know, when it comes to the battery technology, you know, we we're on we're on top. I mean, we they've been doing battery stuff for a long time. Um, the North American operation is located in Los Angeles, and we also have a 550,000 square foot manufacturing facility um, in Lancaster, California, which is um, just north of of LA, and that's where they manufacture our EV buses, and that's where the final assembly happens for our trucks. Oh, and we also too, it's important to note too, we have service centers in um, New Jersey, Indiana, California, and Hawaii. Um, the one that's on the East Coast here is in uh, Lodi, New Jersey. Uh, so our our view idea as a business, I, I, this slide's important, I just bring it up because we're not just a refuse or a truck, electric truck company. Um, we do a lot of forklifts and a lot of buses, um, transit buses, school buses. Um, we're also in the passenger vehicle market, and then we also do batteries for energy storage, um, electronics, and there's also a SkyRail division. So our battery technology is is operating in uh, a lot of different applications, you know, across the world. Uh, this is just a uh, just kind of shows you a picture of our manufacturing facility in Lancaster, which I, I mentioned before. Um, again, 550,000 square feet, and that's where the, the transit buses are manufactured and the uh, trucks go through final assembly, battery install, uh, quality control, things like that. Um, again, this just kind of shows, you know, our workforce is, um, you know, it's a, it's a union uh, factory and that's again, that's where our, our truck assembly is is finished. Uh, here's some quick facts. We kind of touched on some of this stuff already. Um, there's there's about 800 workers at the plant in uh, California. Overall, there's about a little over 900 um, employees for BYD in North America. Um, we are the national leader in electric buses um, delivered with over 600. And the factory is uh, ISO um, certified. And this slide here just kind of gives you a little bit of information on that. And again, this just kind of highlights our the amount of employees that we have, our presence here in, in North America. All right, so here's our, this slide's about our battery technology. So, you know, with an EV vehicle, obviously batteries are, are very important. So we use a, a lithium iron phosphate battery. They're, there are no heavy metals, no toxic um, electrolytes, so the batteries are are very safe and they are easy easy to recycle. Um, some other batteries out on the market use heavy metals and things that um, you know aren't as safe. Um, they don't last as long, and then it can be a challenge to to get you know to dispose of the battery when it's you know when its life is is over. Um, so our batteries go through you know rigorous testing from vibrations to dropping to fire. I mean, they, they run them through a whole bunch of tests and um, and they, they last, they make them through. So they're they're strong and they um, they definitely work well in the, you know, this this heavy truck market. This slide here just kind of shows a little bit, you know, of the testing that they go through. Um, so again, impact, puncture, fire tests, crush, vibration, drop. Uh, you can go if you. I've done this when I when I got into this industry. You go to, um, you know, if you just Google or go to YouTube, you can find videos where they'll they'll show batteries being tested in some of these situations. And you know, some of them are you know the, if they're punctured or dropped, you know, they can some of them can explode. And our batteries are, you know, the the chemical technology it's safe. And that does not happen, you know, with our batteries. So they're, um, you know, they're heavily tested and they're they're proven to uh, to, to work. Battery certifications. Again, I'm not going to go through all these, but this just kind of um, highlights, you know, some of the the certifications that our batteries meet. And this next slide, actually, again, you know, what's important here is you look at the right, the column on the right, BYD, their iron phosphate batteries pass all of these standards. Um, so again, very reliable, very safe. And, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, we're kind of the leader in, in the market with the battery technology. So this slide just shows some of the testing. Um, again, this is all, you know, stuff that a lot of truck manufacturers do. You know, they, they run the trucks over, 
you know, simulated roads like this. Um, and, and again, they run them hard and they push them. And again, proven they work, they last. Um, this one here talks about extreme weather testing. I think this is important, especially for the Northeast. Um, you know, we we do have, um, you know, ice, snow, cold weather, wind. So, you know, these tests kind of show that in the summer and in the winter, um, the, the, you know, the batteries hold up and, um, you know, and they, uh, you know, they work. They work in these conditions quite well and um, it'll, um, we're confident that it'll work anywhere in, in the, you know, in the, in North America. All right, so this is our first, this is our class eight. Um, it's called an 8R and there, there are two options. There's a standard range and an extended range. The standard range is a little bit shorter and it's a, it's a 10 wheel um, configuration. And then the extended range is a little bit longer wheelbase, has a, a tag axle and you can fit a little bit, um, little bit larger body on it. So, you know, the gross vehicle weight, um, combined weight rating is 66,000 pounds and the battery packs are either 281 kilowatt or 403. And then uh, you can see the 402 horsepower and the, and the 812 uh, torque. And then available body configurations, uh, side loaders, rear loader, roll off. Um, we work with you know, all the major uh, manufacturers of, uh, of the refuse bodies. Um, we have trucks now in operation that have um, New Way, uh, Leach, uh, I believe we're working on some uh, with Heil. So any of the any of the major um, you know refuse body companies, we uh, you know we can work with, and it'll uh, it'll fit on our on our truck. All right, here's a quick video that just kind of shows our 8R with a side loader. Um, not sure if the, if the audio. Yeah, Jeff, I don't think we're getting audio on it, but sure. Yeah, I, th I think I can. There's an option to share the audio, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find that quickly enough. Let's see here. Find it real quick. Yeah, I can't. I know there's somewhere where you can click to do that, but I cannot find it right here. I'll just let it play just so you can kind of see, you know, and at least we can kind of see, you know, how the truck. We could always send a link out to everyone too after the uh, after the webinar. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll just I'll just let it play. We can just kind of. Love the comment in the chat that electric trucks are almost too quiet to hear anyway. So maybe this is the the sound that it makes on the streets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the the video just had it was it was basically just saying that it was talking about Palo Alto and you know how their um you know their their goal is to have all their residential pickup um be with an electric you know BYD uh, refuse truck. All right, so we'll move past that. All right, the other truck that we offer is a class six. So it's a non CDL truck, um, 26,000 pounds, 211 kilowatt battery um, capacity, 390 horse and, and, and plenty of torque. So these trucks, we, we do have a couple in operation today. I believe they have 10 yard bodies on them. Um, I have been in talks with New Way as well. They have an eight and a half yard uh, packer, which would work pretty well on this setup as well. Um, so it's just another option that we have for, you know, for the you know smaller applications. And what's nice is it's non CDL. You know, finding drivers these days is hard. So this would would help, um, you know, help those fleets that are uh, short on drivers. You know, because this truck doesn't require a um, a CDL. 
and again, um, we can work with any body company, you know, rear loaders, bin wash truck, dump truck, stake truck, box truck, a um, lot of lot of different options for for bodies on uh, on this truck. All right, this is a case study. Um, J and M Sanitation is a refuse company in Idaho, and they have two trucks, two eight R um, extended range trucks that they've had in operation since. Let's see about a year and a half um, and they actually are I believe they're getting ready to order a couple more um, so they they ran their first two everything went well and, and they're going to be getting some more and what's important I like to bring up about this is Idaho where they're located they do have um, similar weather to us not not as harsh but um, temperature wise you know their temperatures in the winter will drop down into the 20s um, so this truck has already run you know through an entire winter in you know in idaho so that just kind of shows that it, it, it'll you know it'll work it'll operate it'll last through um you know through cold you know through cold temperatures and they do they do bulky item collection um about eight hours of of collection and then you know they come back with a um, 30 percent or more state of charge by the uh, by the end of the run and then some of our battery technology so um, our chargers, um, I mean, our trucks have a CCS1 charging capability. Um, we work with, um, you know, I know the, the the presenters before me mentioned ChargePoint. You know, BYD, we have a handful of charging partners that we work with that have tested their chargers on our trucks to make sure they communicate and, and work. Um, so when it comes to charging, we, uh, you know, we'll work with the client figure out the best uh, the best fit, you know, based on, you know, when they're going to be able to charge and, and all that and what power they have on site. And then we just kind of bring in these charging partners and um, and they offer, you know, all different kinds of chargers from, you know, maybe 20, 30 kilowatt an hour to 150, 185. So there's there's tons of options when it comes to charging. Um, and then vehicle to grid is something that's going to be coming, you know, on our trucks in 2023. And I know the, the next presenter, George Miller, he'll be speaking, um, you know, a little bit more about that because that's kind of what his company does. Um, but we do have the, the V2G capabilities coming uh, for next year. And that's the end of it. So again, there's my contact info and then Michael Stafford below there. Um, you know, we're happy to answer any questions when there, you know, when there's time for it. And of course, anybody can reach out to either one of us uh, directly and we can, um, you know, certainly have a more in-depth conversation, you know, about your operation and and see what would be, you know, the best fit for, for our trucks and your operation. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, great yeah, to see the, the options that are available for folks that are considering electrifying their trash trucks. Uh, we're going to, as you kind of ended on a perfect note here, because we are going to transition now to hearing a little bit more about how do we charge these vehicles? And here's a solution that I'd like to, uh, to uh, have George Miller come on from Formata Energy and talk with us a little bit about this vehicle to X connection or V to G. You know, I know you're going to kind of go through a little run through of a, of a 101 for us so that we can understand a little bit better um, these terminolo this terminology. So I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, that was a great presentation, Jeff. Well done. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Looks good. Perfect. Uh, so George Miller here, Director of Business Development here at Fermata Energy, and I actually spent about five years over at BYD on the truck side. So I know Michael Stafford and and now know Jeff well and, and their technology, really proud of what they're doing and excited about how they're they're pushing the, the medium and heavy duty market forward into electrification and really excited about their V2G and V2X enabled vehicles because uh, I think this is a great opportunity for us to see additional value streams come out of these EVs that we're launching. Uh, so Fermata is the company that is unlocking these value streams out of battery electric vehicles. We're making them profitable and uh, valuable when they're parked. Uh, so first off, what is vehicle to everything? Um, vehicle to, to grid, vehicle to building, and vehicle to home. Uh, vehicle to grid is when you take the energy that's in your vehicle uh, when it's parked <clears throat> and you push it out into the grid. Uh, this helps the grid to enable more renewables and to moderate demands when uh, when we have a, a high demand on the grid for air conditioning or running dryers when everyone comes home. Oftentimes it's in the summer 
uh, in the afternoons that the grid has really high demands. And so they're kicking on these really expensive natural gas peaker plants. We're able to use batteries uh, to, to provide additional value there and, uh, and stabilize the grid. Uh, vehicle to building is a way for you to reduce electricity costs. All these commercial buildings uh, have demand charges that come along with their bill. And uh, those will often come when you have the, the most demand on your electricity. Um, some of my previous customers in the refuse business, when they kick on their compressors for uh, natural gas, uh, that will peak their electricity load and uh, and they'll get a huge charge, um, you know, in, in the kind of six figures uh, just for demand charges. And you can use these electric electric vehicles and Fermata's software to estimate when that's coming, power the building from your vehicle, and cut that demand charge significantly, saving you thousands of dollars a year. And with these refuse trucks, uh, you know, it could be in the the order of, of tens of thousands um, per year. Vehicle to home less relevant to today's conversation because um, most of these folks aren't parking at home. But that does allow for some emergency backup uh, power solutions. Uh, where you can power your home uh, and also integrate solar and, and other renewables onto your home better with uh, an EV, um, sort of like the, the Ford Lightning has been advertising uh, a partner of, of Fermata's at this point. Um, things that are necessary to do this, you need to have the software, which is really our specialty uh, that optimizes for when that power is needed, uh, integrates with the utilities, different um, uh, key software platforms. Uh, they call them DERMS aggregators. Uh, we sometimes play as a DERMS aggregator. Sometimes we integrate with them, but distributed energy resource management systems. That's that's what we're, we're doing. And then we're using our smart learning algorithms to understand when that electricity is needed, whether it's by your building or by the grid. And then we optimize that with your duty cycle, because number one thing, I, I want to make it very clear, we are not looking to affect your duty cycle at all. We know that these trash trucks need to go out on their routes, and oftentimes they need to have backup power so that they can go out in an emergency situation. So our software allows for you to say, you know, this is how much charge I need as backup. Uh, this is when I need it fully charged in order to go out on its route. Um, you know, at this point, we're really in the refuse uh, electric truck business looking to make certain that the trucks have enough energy to do those eight hours um, on one uh, shift, do a thousand to 1200 um, loads or you know packs um, or pickups. Yeah, pickups. Um, and, uh, and so we need to optimize that and also protect the battery. So that's the software component. Uh, you also need a bi-directional charger. We make one of those, the first ever UL9741 uh, certified charger, DC, was made by Fermata Energy, the FE15. And that has been operating here for now two years, making money for different customers. And uh, with that, we also work with other charger companies. Rhombus is a company that has integrated with BYD as well as a number of other uh, auto OEMs and they have a bi-directional uh, high power charger, a 60 kilowatt and a 125. And uh, that's another group that we work closely with. And then you need a bi-directionally capable EV. Uh, so as Jeff noted, BYD is angling to having that uh, ready here at the end of this year, uh, model year 2023. Uh, and we're working with others. Uh, you know, Mac is certainly um, got this on their, their radar. I can't speak to exactly when I'll, I'll let them kind of speak to that when when um, that topic comes up. Uh, interested to hear how Excel is thinking about this opportunity as well. Uh, but we're seeing a lot of different auto OEMs enable this. It's really a two part piece. Um, the electric vehicle controller, uh, communications controller needs to have that capability and the software needs to have the right communications to uh, to enable a negative power flow. Uh, so power out of the vehicle. Uh, it's not rocket science in, by any means, uh, but it does need to be safe. Uh, you want to make certain that it's communicating well and reliably with the charger because you don't want sessions to drop out and to have your vehicle uh, not charged in the morning when you need it. So um, all of those are, are critical elements to to make this work. 
this is where we're operating today. Uh, we've been making uh, you know, large dollars at this point on small projects. Uh, we're working with Nissan Leafs primarily as the first bi-directionally capable EV and our 15 kilowatt charger. Uh, we'll have a 20 kilowatt coming out later this year. And we also have these partners like Rhombus that are, uh, are enabling us into the higher powered uh, opportunities um, in the 60 and 125 kilowatt ranges. Uh, so that those ranges would multiply apply these numbers by, you know, four or eight X. Uh, uh, so this is really looking at uh, deployments of one charger and one vehicle and they have the capability to scale from there. So all of the red ones are opportunities that are live. You're seeing real dollars. I'll show a couple of examples. And then the dotted lines are where these are coming online or or they've been installed but not quite interconnected. Um, you know, all of these are kind of in the process of, of enabling them. So um, next up, this is uh, one example in Rhode Island where we had one leaf and one 15 kilowatt charger. We participated in National Grid's um, program called Connected Solutions. And there we had perfect performance uh, across 27 events. Uh, it was all during June, July, August. Uh, and there in the afternoons, uh, like a two to three hour period in which we would discharge the vehicles uh, when asked by the um, National Grid program. And, um, and then we would charge them afterwards uh, so that they were ready for, for duty cycle in the morning. And um, across 27 events, 57 hours of discharging, we were able to make $4,325. We also used our software to optimize their demand charges, save them an extra $222. So in three months, we were able to make $4,500 on one Nissan Leaf, which for reference that that pays for the lease cost of that Leaf um, entirely without the duty cycle component. Um, and when you think about refuse trucks, it, it just scales from there. And I'll get to that later on. Here in Boulder, uh, we did just the demand charge management side where there, there wasn't a program that was very lucrative like in Rhode Island or other parts of the Northeast. Uh, and there, just on demand charges, we were able to save them nearly $3,000 across the year uh, because of those peaky loads and reduce those demand charges. Uh, these are some of the OEMs that are advancing this. So Nissan has led the way. Ford has been uh, really pushing this hard with their Ford Lightning. We're seeing it come forth with General Motors, who's participating in a, an MOU with the Department of Energy and us and a few others, uh, seeing announcements from Porsche, VW, and all of these along the bottom. Uh, and uh, then on the medium and heavy duty side, uh, we've seen public announcements from Lion Electric and BYD, uh, among others. And uh, and I think it's uh, new news today from Jeff that uh, you know I've been speaking with them, but uh, but that it's publicly coming forth on the trucks. Uh, so really exciting to to hear that today. Um, here I want to just get into specifically on refuse. Um, these allow for bigger batteries uh, and really dedicated duty cycles. So just taking a look at the kind of relevant trucks from today uh, and our, our session, uh, we've got the BYD-8R extended range that Jeff was talking about. That's got a 403 kilowatt hour battery. It charges at 120 kilowatts. And that compared with a 62 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf battery is just, you know, massive. Uh, it's, you know, essentially well my math is uh six times a little over six times uh the size of the nissan leaf battery and the charging speed there uh is also six times the capabilities that uh that we would be charging the the nissan leaf at so that allows for all of those numbers that i previously stated to to multiply by six times um, the demand charges depend upon your your load but most of these commercial facilities have more than enough uh, demand charges to to benefit from that and the demand response programs are uncapped uh, so you can really make um, that scale of money across the summertime when uh, when those programs need it uh, the mac lr electric that's uh, you know kind of in line with what uh, new york sanitation um, will be using i know they they stated a smaller capacity um, from the because they were just early on and they were a great um, and impressive uh, leader in the field uh, the the new mac lr electric has the 376 kilowatt hour battery the class six
George, thank you so much. That was a great presentation. And I think you know you hit the nail on the head when we think about electrifying, especially the heavy duty sector. There's that concern about you know this demand that's going to be placed on the grid and this you know vehicle to everything technology really is a solution to helping to create some more resilience for our grid. So thank you for sharing that. We'll get we'll get to questions in a little bit. So go ahead and uh, stop sharing and we'll invite our next presenter. Uh, we have we have XL Fleet here to share about the quantum refuse trucks. This is another opportunity for fleets that maybe have smaller refuse trucks on the road um, to take a look at this particular uh, solution that XL Fleet has partnered with Curb Tender on. And I'm going to invite Toza on screen. There you are. Good to see you. Go ahead and uh, start sharing your slides if you're able to, Toza. And as um, as a reminder, I have them too. Oh, looks like they're up. Excellent. Over to you, sir. Jessica, thank you very much um, for inviting us today. Um, so I plan to discuss, um, I've got 15 minutes here, and we plan to discuss who we are, both XL and Curb Tender, um, why electrify the refuse truck. Uh, we'll go over our vehicle spec, and then we'll speak to how to buy the vehicle today. Um, four folks are joining me from our organization, as well as Curb Tender, it's myself, Doug Yurick, who's the regional sales manager for Curb Tender in the Northeast. Justin Ferris, who leads up our uh, electrification service team. Um, and Bob Keens, who's uh, um, the sales manager on the XL side uh, in the Northeast. That said, I'll first introduce XL Fleet. Um, XL Fleet was a company that started um, in the Boston area in 2009. It was started by an MIT um, professor. He is still involved in the business um, as an advisor um, and we started as a hybrid company. So we were making aftermarket um, hybrid uh, drivetrains uh, and we are still making those to this day. That is, I would say as of today, still our primary business um, and we've moved into electric vehicle space as well with our partnership with Curb Tender. Uh, we got into an agreement with Curb Tender a couple years ago to develop the Class 6 refuse truck and we have done so we launched it this year at Waste Expo in Las Vegas. Um, and we have a couple demo units out there with municipalities and cities running miles right now. It's being, being perceived very well and we plan to have full production come December of this year. So a couple months away and we're very excited about that. The company as a whole is also doing some other sustainable um, projects. We're working with the US military on an idling technology on some of their military vehicles. And we have a charging uh, infrastructure side of our business called XL Grid that deals with charging um, and energy storage. Curb Tender, who we partnered with, um, is a leader in the refuse space um, and a big leader in the, in the what I'd call the smaller refuse truck, which is the Class 6. Um, they've been in business over 50 years. Uh, they have factories in both Iowa and Nebraska. Um, and they represent many um, fleets such as Dallas, New York, Toronto. Um, so they're in very major uh, markets. Um, now, why? A lot of people, when we kind of go through these presentations, they ask why, um, why develop an electric refuse truck? And it's a really great application, but when it comes to sustainability, these are some of your worst emitters out there. Um, so the average class six um, refuse truck gets between five to six miles per gallon. That behind um, transit buses and class eight trucks in the, in the transportation industry are the worst um, fuel emitters. And we felt that the, the class six vehicle uh, with the battery capacity that we can put on it and the cost that's associated with the large batteries that come on these commercial trucks, um, we could get to the payload and the range necessary to not really affect the drive cycle or the payload cycle on a vehicle like this. Um, as we've been driving miles and demoing and testing these vehicles, um, and, and we, you kind of compare it to what you can get in your diesel or gas versions, um, on a daily route, we have plenty of spare battery. By the time we come home uh, from a day shift, um, you have 17% of the battery left after we ran out on a 10 and a half hour shift operating the, the rear loader um, 30 times basically an hour. Um, you have much lower per mile travel cost. You, you increase your brake life significantly. You have faster acceleration um, from the more available torque. I think everyone's getting more and more familiar with 
electric vehicles and how much torque they do have. You have lower maintenance costs, less moving parts. You're never going to change oil again. Um, and you have a quieter and smoother operation, no emissions, um, and you will have happier drivers as they get used to operating these electric trash trucks. Um, when you look at the spec of our vehicle, um, this stuff's all available on our website that you can go look at. I'll point out a couple of key items and we'll certainly field questions after um, and answer any specific questions you may have. But we have about 6,000 pounds of payload capacity. That is no different. This vehicle is typically an F550 with the, the rear loader put on it. Um, and it would have that same payload capacity in a, in a gas version. Um, and the range is, you know, we write slightly more than 100 miles. It, it's, it, it obviously depends on what you're carrying weight wise. You are regenning um, power into the battery pack as you're braking all day long. So even though the battery pack uh, has about 170 kilowatt hours, throughout the day, as you drain that battery, you are actually recouping some energy through regenerative braking. If you've driven a Tesla, it's the same kind of technology. Um, and now, I, Jessica, I'm not sure if you've made or allowed Doug Yurick to speak. Or yeah, on Doug's on here. He's here? All right, great. I'm going to let Doug, uh, Doug's original sales rep for Curb Tender, who is selling this truck across the country and in Canada, um, and I'll let him speak to how to buy this. So Curb Tender um, has regional dealers. Uh, you can see the ones that we have in New England at this point in time. JC Madigan handles both Massachusetts and Southern New Hampshire. CEJJ handles Vermont. Syncon's handling Northeastern uh, New York. Um, we, we also are looking for dealers actively looking in Maine, so we hope to have uh, coverage across the whole uh, New England area at some point. Um, you also, for municipalities, if you deal with uh, Sourcewell, you can buy directly off the Sourcewell contract. Um, they also have a leasing agent, uh, which is NCL, um, who's, who's part of the Sourcewell deal. Anything that's not covered by our resellers, you can call me directly and we can sell factory direct. Um, you can see our website there, my cell phone number and my email address. Next slide. Again, my contact information. So Doug, we also speak to some incentives that are out there. We do have an incentive team that can dig deeper in your specific county, region, city uh, for what's out there. But we wanted to just flash up here that there is a ton of uh, funding being provided by the federal government and a lot of times your state and local governments when it comes to uh, battery electric vehicles. Um, so I'd encourage you to do the research or contact us and we'll do the research for you to see if, if that's necessary uh, in your particular situation. But Jessica, that's that's the presentation for us. Um, we certainly open to fielding questions right now, or if you know you take it from here and let us know if we'll do that at the end. Excellent, Toza. Yeah, go ahead and stop screen sharing at this point, and I think um, we will open up the floor for some Q and A. I know I saw some in the chat. I'm going to invite Peggy on screen now to um, to manage our Q and A. Great. Uh, well, thank you so much to our presenters. Um, this is fantastic stuff. I think as many of you mentioned, uh, these big diesel trucks moving very slowly through our neighborhoods have a huge impact not only um, on our emissions, but our air quality as they drive by homes. Um, so I'm going to go through the chat um, and try, I'll start from the, I'll start back from the beginning um, when um, Spiro and uh, was speaking. Um, let's see, uh, some asked about funding, I've responded. Um, what's a holster? I, I believe those are the smaller um, refuse uh, pickup trucks, but Spiro, um, do you think you can help me answer that? Yes, yeah, certainly. It's a, it's a term we use uh, here at DSNY. It's really a, a, a mini salt spreader. We call it a holster. Okay. Yeah, it all does. Right. All of course, maybe we got different terms for those. Yeah, yeah, we do have our own terms here, and it, and it's used for all tertiary tertiary streets where the big 
soil spreaders can't uh, get into. OK, those would probably be for for Vermonters. Those would be more like our sidewalk plows. Um, and then so uh, this is Abby Swain again from the um, EPA. I don't mean to call you out, Abby, but you get a couple of good questions. Um, what are, are, are your folks or residents um, in New York City getting um, some feedback from the public on the noise reduction or the emissions? I mean, is it enough of a um, no, kind of a noticeable change when uh, on your pilot? Yes, yeah, so uh, the it was well received by by the operators operators and the union and uh, a, a few of the um, uh, residents did comment how quiet the truck was to the operators and so uh, we, we did get some positive feedback through the launch of the the battery electric mac lr so so far uh, so good and i think that sh that, that will continue yeah i believe so i mean kind of one little drop in the bucket one at a time um, so um, there are a couple questions I'm going to combine together and maybe anyone can um, answer these. It's about the added weight of the battery. So part one is um, looking at the does the weight of the battery um, make um, a difference in the wear and tear on the streets and then kind of related to that. Um, what about the tire design? Um, again, if the, the weight of the battery and um, the torque of electric trucks is different, um, so is there a weight component as well as um, a tire maintenance issue um, that needs to be addressed either in training or just awareness uh, to fleets who um, adopt the electric refuse trucks or any kind of the heavy duty trucks? And anyone can answer that. Um, I can start. Uh, so uh, our electric refuse trucks have a gross, uh, our standard diesel fleet uh, refuse trucks have a, a GVW gross vehicle weight rating of 72,000 pounds. The battery electric counterpart is no different. It's also 72,000 pound GVW. As a matter of fact, there, there is no change in the body. It's the same body as the diesel counterpart and its payload is at a maximum of uh, 25,000 pound payload. So as far as the overall weight of the truck, the payload, Mack Trucks was able to meet our specs with respect to capacity GVW. So there was really no change when compared to uh, its diesel counterpart. With respect to torque, I know these electric vehicles launch from a start, you know, electric motors have 100% talk right from zero and and the manufacturers can adjust that right you know and they could also work with the regenerative braking they can make the regenerative braking uh more aggressive or less aggressive so they're able to fine tune and, and, and tweak the uh, the performance of the vehicle uh to um to f to make it acceptable to the end user so uh yeah there's no issue with as far as weight the batteries did not you know don't forget we we'll lose the weight of the transmission. We we'll lose the weight of the diesel engine, and so um, you know it, it almost uh, equals out. Perfect. That's um, it's really helpful um, to have uh, to have this kind of real world example for us um, to look to you, Spiro, um, and Commissioner Hart on, uh, on on how this has been running on the roads. Um, let's see, uh, BYD. Have you sold any waste haulers and um, what are the markets? Um, and then a, an additional question is, are you offering a, a kind of a fleet as a service model? You know, I what is I, I guess the terminology? What What is a waste hauler? I guess if that could just be clarified, I'm not exactly sure what they mean. Uh, like um, a, a refuse hauler, Graham, can you specify? Does it is it? like a, a, a refuse hauler. We, I think we all use sli slightly different terms, rubbish waste, um, solid waste haulers, trash trucks. So, so in answer to the question, this is are, are you looking for the specific size, whether it's a side loader or a back loader? So I don't know, Graham, if you can clarify. I don't know, if Michael, can you chime in? I don't know, maybe you have some input on this. Hear me? Can you? Can am I being heard? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So 
uh, we have. We, we've sold a number of uh, trucks throughout the United States in various locations. So um, I think the uh, I think the, the the fact of the matter is is that from an OEM standpoint, one of the things that Jeff pointed out was just the sheer number of products that we have in the, in the marketplace today. The refuse hauler piece is simply one of them, but from a design standpoint, from a drivetrain standpoint, the technology is much the same throughout in our eight class eight trucks, class six trucks, as it is in the refuse haulers. We, we have the buses, et cetera. So it's not something that's new for us to have in the in the marketplace. And to um, Jeff's point, we've worked with a number of different organizations on being able to have our refuse bodies married to the tr to the uh, cabin chassis truck that we have out there. So um, this is not new. Um, it's something that I think is starting to proliferate more and more as time goes forward. We're seeing a number of states jump in and start backstopping and supporting the adaptation of electric vehicles. And we're happy to help in whatever way, shape or form you might have uh, interest in. One thing I should caution, and that is, is that if you're interested in this, it's good to have a consultation with an OEM rep to be able to understand what their product's capabilities are to be able to cover the basis for the requirement of that truck. It is a tool and you're actually buying this product to be able to effectively go out there and perform and be able to do a service. And we want to make sure that whatever that range, whatever the requirements are, whatever the marrying body is, whatever the refuse body is that's being married to the cabin chassis, all works in coordination and is able to accomplish the requirements for the organization that's uh, looking for a refuse truck. But it's certainly available and it's it's only getting better. Yeah, I mean, thank just you. Quickly chime in because oh, um, I am seeing he's asking uh, what markets um, that uh, that BYD has trucks. So there certainly are a few in California, uh, both north and south. Uh, as they mentioned, JNM over in Idaho, there are quite a few over in New Jersey, um, and have worked with uh, Hudson County Motors, the dealer out there. Uh, also a few down in Florida, out of Ocala, uh, and and a range of others since uh, since my time there at BYD. But but certainly a, a lot out in the market. A lot of them. I think the, the primary focus has been around Class Eights, uh, but there are still as well uh, some of the Class Sixes that I've seen over I think Maryland and and New Jersey. Uh, so certainly a few of them out there. Thank you. I think for for the northern tier here, I mean, we appreciate the um, the data points from New York City Sanitation. Um, and while it gets cold there, uh, not quite as cold as it does uh, up here in northern New England. Um, and and so kind of maybe related to this is, um, you know, we'd love more data points um, up in the northern tier. Um, and um, are there so are there lease to buy options? That's one question. And then another question are what are demo opportunities? Um, looking at, you know, the three clean cities coalitions here, um, we have, you know, several stakeholders who are interested in this. So, you know, perhaps offline start thinking, um, um, you know, talking to my fleet guys here about what um, what what uh, a long term demo across um, the three states could look like so we can really get some data points. Um, but back to the question about, you know, are there lease to buy options or lease to test um, for and someone's looking for any turnkey options? Anybody? Um, for, for BYD, there's certainly uh, any number of options with regard to leases. Um, we can we can structure a closed end lease, open end lease, track lease. Uh, you know, uh, there's just a number of ways to be able to set that up and have a buy option at the end if, in fact, that's what is uh, desired. So, uh, in answer to your question, yes. Curb tender and XL fleet. We also have uh, lease options uh, through Sourcewell. Okay, great. And I would also add that the that? XL truck we've got, we've got two demos and, you know, with probably like 60 days notice or something, we could probably get it to you, to a region, um, and you can have it, drive it, et cetera. Okay, great. Um, and what's the lead time um, on trucks? I mean, I think we're all keenly aware of supply chain issues. Um, and we just need brutal honesty. If it's an 18 month lead or whatever, um, do you have a sense of, of what that lead time could be? When we look at when we need to apply for a funding, what the um, ask is for budgets and factoring all that in. 
So on behalf of BYD, we do have a very limited inventory of trucks that are available right now. So um, I generally tell people, depending on what the configuration is that they're looking for, be it a side loader, rear loader, or extended range product, um, we can better hone in on what the lead time is for those trucks. But uh, typically speaking, we're looking right now between 12 and 14 months uh, before a truck actually is able to arrive. Thank you. And, and on Excel's behalf, right, we're coming to market with our first production ones in December that we, we we have components for and we feel comfortable that we will have some in the marketplace. But following those, I too, we're probably in about the 12 month range, um, but certainly working to, to, to get that down as supply. Actually the right application. Yeah, actually, um, this on that goes, point, yeah, go, if sorry. you don't mind me just um, mm -hmm. doubling down on the utility sorry. piece, we are already working with the New Hampshire Electric Cooperative, um, <clears throat> where there's a transactive energy rate that we're making large amounts of money uh, per day on these these vehicles. We've done some work with Green Mountain Power, and we've heard interest from uh, Central Maine Power. So all of these areas are places that have grid constraints and uh, would be valuable for this uh, V to X capability. Great. Thank you. Um, and this one probably goes out maybe more towards um, Spiro. Um, should municipalities watch out for any major sticking points for OEMs or kind of electrification as service providers when going out to bid? When you went out to bid, Spiro, what were, do, do you have any lessons learned um, for some of our smaller municipalities that you can share with us? Yes, yeah, so um, the these first seven trucks that we purchased was like a negotiated procurement, basically. We have not gone out for bid for electric refuse truck just yet. We are in the process of developing a, a, um, a um, an electric uh, refuse truck specification that will allow us to go out uh, for bid. That specification will be written around our duty cycle, our, our, our uh, uh, platform, our, our pay payload. And so um, we will be, you know, we will exercise caution and make sure that that um, multiple bidders can can bid on on the platform, and that and that the um, the specification the our, our specs meet our operate our, our operational needs. So uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, we're we're there now, and we're in the process of of writing up our, our first battery electric refuse truck specification as we speak. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so hopefully, and hopefully that answered the question about municipalities, which I think is probably being a little bit really specific on your duty cycle. Um, and again, having those conversations with your utility provider so that you're making sure um, that you have the capacity to charge what you need to charge. Um, okay, I think I've gotten through most of the questions where I want to finish on time. Um, so any any burning questions that I did not get to? Jessica, if you can. I think it looks good. Peggy. I think you below. touched on them. And once again, I, th I think, you know, there is a question there from Shelly Dean. Um, folks, you know, the presenters on the call, if you want to maybe just scroll through the chat quick and make sure that you've responded to those questions that are there. And I think we'll move on to our next slide. Peggy, thank you so much. I'm going to come on screen real quick here and um, just run through a couple of slides and then have Peggy give us some closing remarks. So we had asked several questions of the attendees on this call when we asked you to register. And one of those questions was, what concerns might you have about electric refuse trucks? And I just wanted to highlight um, some of those concerns and hopefully we've addressed them today or if not we've given you connections to folks that can maybe talk through those concerns with you but um, for the most part folks you know a lot of folks were just not sure I think we have this question a lot of times we don't know what questions we might have until we're going through that process right so folks were kind of not sure and I think maybe there's some opportunity as Peggy highlighted to um, maybe get some demonstrations here in our state so that we can get some fleet managers using these vehicles and kind of understanding what their questions are but up front purchase price and costs always a burning question when we think about electrifying because there tends to be that delta between the cost of a diesel versus the cost of electric 
charging costs and concerns. I think, you know, Fermata brought a, a great solution today to kind of be thinking through how you might be able to offset those costs. Um, some folks were like, just we don't have questions. We don't have concerns at this point. So we're just excited about and enthusiastic about the technology. Maintenance and repair costs and concerns. Once again, the cost, what is the, you know, when we look at electric, look at that big picture though, that total cost of ownership, because a lot of times you're saving fuel costs, right? And you're saving maybe some maintenance costs that you have on a diesel vehicle. The range of the vehicle. Range anxiety has been the ongoing and, and burning question here in the Northeast. But just a little snapshot of those concerns and, and thank you to all of our presenters for I think addressing a lot of those on this call today, especially to Spiro for, for sharing your, your on the ground insights from having demonstrated electric refuse trucks. We just want to highlight what cost being the major concern, there are some solutions to that, right? So there is Diesel Emissions Reduction Act or DEER funding available, not just at the national level through the EPA, but also at the state level. So New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine get buckets of funding from the Environmental Protection Agency to manage our state clean diesel programs. And this funding has been available on an annual basis. Eligible, eligible applicants include private fleet managers on the call today, uh, include schools, include um, towns and cities, include nonprofits. So take a look at this funding. Um, I do want to highlight that with a project that's replacing a diesel vehicle with electric, that project could be eligible for up to 45% funding towards that project. So for example, uh, the Alternative Fuel Data Center a fleet tool shows that electric trash trucks could cost around a half a million dollars. Well, with DERA funding, that funding could reduce the cost of that vehicle to below the comparable diesel vehicle. So I've got a little example on the slide. Take a look at that. Um, the funding also can be used towards a charging unit per vehicle. So, you know, any projects with electrification, this is great funding to be looking at. I also want to highlight that currently in New Hampshire, we have an open state clean diesel program. This funding is available to New Hampshire fleets. Um, that request for proposals, uh, the first round uh, is due on next Friday, September 9th. But we also have a round two and round three. So uh, my colleague and grant manager here at DES, Ricky DeSillo, is on this webinar and, um, um, you know, I can certainly connect you with him if you've got questions. Uh, Vermont's uh, program is going to open in early October and Maine has this really neat, you know, applicants can apply on a, on a rolling basis and then that funding will become available in October. So here's a great solution to that cost question. One other question that we asked you wanted to show is, is there interest in participating in an electric refuse truck demonstration? So we had 81% of the attendees on this call saying, yes, we would love to get our hands on an electric refuse truck. So, um, you know, I'm going to be looking to XL Fleet and no pressure and BYD, no pressure to maybe step in and, and maybe work with us on something like that. Peg, I'm going to turn it over to you to, to cap us off with some references and resources and closing remarks. Yes, and for, for any of these funding opportunities, please look to your Clean Cities coalitions for um, for support and assistance. Um, we can help with a lot of these tools with um, from the Alternative Fuels Data Center, which is like my favorite geeky toolbox, um, which has case studies. Um, you know, of course, with electric refuge stuff, they're being you know updated regularly, and we want that northern tier um, case study in there soon. Um, but we can also help with vehicle searches and um, look at you know total cost of um, vehicle ownership and um, maintenance. Next slide. We can also um, work with DOE and technical response for um, more detailed technical assistance if um, you kind of are trying to kind of crack some nut in your fleet and you can't figure it out. Um, we really can tap into some of the, the resources available to Clean Cities coordinators um, at the Department of Energy. Next slide. And, and and that's it. Um, we're at the top of the hour. I want to thank everyone for um, your attendance, for your time. Um, thank you to Deputy Director um, Spiro Catan and to Commissioner Steve Hart, Jeff Emerine, um, George Miller, Bob Keynes, um, and Toza Cernolovich. So I just brutalized your last name, um, but thank you so You're much great. to um, all our presenters. <laughs> thank you to all our pre presenters, um, as well as my colleagues in um, New Hampshire and Maine. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.
Thank you. Thank you.